If anybody in comics gives Superman a run for his money in terms of weird and wonderful alternate realities, it's the X-Men. Especially since Days of Future Past's dystopian look at one of the many possible futures in store for the members of Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. Readers have been party to any number of alternate versions of the X-Men, which, after the Exiles run in the 90s, resulted in mutants coming in all different shapes, sizes, and species. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 insane alternate versions of the X-Men you won't believe exist. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 10, the ex-babies. Writer Chris Claremont is responsible for some of the most famous and rightly regarded stories and concepts in the history of the series, such as introducing characters like Rogue, Emma Frost, and Gambit, as well as establishing the ex-babies? Originally the literal de-aged version of the X-Men, regular villain Mojo saw fit to create his own toddler-sized clones of the mutant heroes, each with suitably adorable names. Nightcrawler becomes Creepycrawler, Storm becomes Shower, etc, etc. In reality, their creation was inspired by the current trend for younger versions of popular characters like the Muppet Babies. The ex-babies have cropped up sporadically since, a decent one-note joke run into the ground by repeated use, but please no more. Number 9. Jean Grey and Wolverine get married old and fat in theory, the Earth X version of Wolverine got everything the character wanted. In that he finally bested Cyclops for the love of Jean Grey, the two married settled down and promptly became redneck stereotypes, with Logan sitting on his fat ass in front of the TV and Jean being an equally overweight, put upon wife. While slumped in his lazy boy like a rounder, hairier Joey or Chandler, Wolvie claims that he can't get drunk or fat because of his mutant healing factor, which is evidently untrue. That said, he's quite happy to use his out of shape dad bod as an excuse to not defend the world when Captain America asks him for a favour. Disgusted, Jean leaves him, not before, that is, revealing that she was actually Madeline Pryor, a clone of Jean Grey created by Mr. Sinister, which, as breakups go, is a pretty awesome mic drop moment. Number 8. Professor Xavier's Secret Service The one-shot X-Men Millennial Visions is made up of a few short stories about alternate reality X-Men, but my favourite has to be Professor X's Secret Service. Politician Valerie Cooper, who was sympathetic to the mutant cause, becomes president, only to be assassinated along with pals Magneto and Quicksilver. With the former leader of mutant nation Genosha dead, the position lands at the feet of Charles Xavier, with the X-Men focusing their energies on being Professor X's personal body guards and spies, stopping any potential assassins and generally making sure Genosha is in good nick. It had the X-Men as James Bond style spies in sleek black costumes, sign me the f up. Number 7. The Celebrity X-Men In the regular Marvel Universe, mutants are seen as abominations, genetics gone wrong, a danger to the human race and everyone else. Despite their costumes and saving the planet time and time again, they aren't viewed as superheroes. Well, for Exiles member Mimic, things were a total 180 of that. In his universe, mutants, and the X-Men especially, were even more celebrated than heroes like the Avengers or the Fantastic Four. In most universes, mutant kind live in constant fear of being ostracized, run out of town, or killed, but Mimic got respect, money, and more. Yeah, it sort of defeated the point of everything the X-Men stand for, but it was still a neat little slice of the alternate reality pie. Number 6. Mutant Heralds of Asgard One of those crossovers devised by pulling names out of a hat or something, during the mid-80s Marvel had the total genius idea of mashing together the X-Men and Thor in Asgardian Wars. Loki, prior to being played by Tom Hiddleston slash anybody really caring about him, decided to kidnap Storm and the new mutants, planning to turn the depowered weather goddess into the new god of thunder. Things didn't work out. Storm stopped wearing that boss winged helmet over a mohawk and everybody went on with their lives as if nothing ever happened. Except that didn't happen in one alternate reality, as outlined in What If the X-Men Had Stayed in Asgard. In this version of events, half the mutants got sent back to Earth and the rest stayed in this dimension. Loki, meanwhile, managed to pull through in his plan to make Storm the new Thor and Queen of Asgard, since his real brother had been turned into a... frog? Yeah, makes sense I suppose. Number 5. Obligatory Nazi Reichsman 
It seems like every superhero has their Nazi analog, so why should the X-Men be any different? Especially when the persecution of minorities in World War II era Germany is an important part of certain characters' backstories and dovetail with the depiction of mutants as an oppressed group in the comic books. Well, they shouldn't be any different, and they're not, as evidenced by the Nazi Reichsmen who live on an alternate Earth where the Nazis won the war and took over the world. Earth 957 is actually one of the straightest and therefore most disturbing Nazi alternate realities in comics. In this universe, Charles Xavier was a Joseph Mengel sort, creating mutants through barbaric genetic experiments, and saw the X-Men are totally evil jerks and freaks. Number 4 Witches and Demons in the 16th Century one of the most interesting alternate realities was one of Neil Gaiman's making, which transplanted the Marvel Universe to the Elizabethan era. Enrolled at Master Carlos Javier's select college for the Sons of Gentle Folk were Roberto Trefusis, who had mastery over ice and was the nephew of Sir Francis Drake, Scordius Summerisle, who wore a visor made of rubies, Hal McCoy, who's pretty self-explanatory, and John Gray. Jean Grey masquerading as a man a la Shakespeare comedies of the time, and Werner, who fancied John in both of their guises. And yep, I probably mangled the pronunciation of every one in there. Number 3. Future Beast is a drug addict, Beak has a baseball bat. Grant Morrison loves his alternate realities, and Here Comes Tomorrow, the final arc in his celebrated new X-Men run, is one of his best. Here Come Tomorrow's Earth 15104 sees a post-apocalyptic world overseen by a white-furred Hank McCoy, who has an army of clone Nightcrawlers with added Cyclops optic blasts and use them to wage war on the rest of humanity. In the meantime, the rest of the X-Men have become a trans-species organization with a less than strict screening program, taking on human member Tom Skylark and his pet Sentinel, as well as former villain Cassandra Nova. With those two, an aging Wolverine, the buff descendant of feathered X-Men Beak, as well as an unnecessarily sexy android Ava for good measure, the X-Men ended up in this strange dark future as a result of Cyclops retiring from his duties in the present day. Anyway, in the end, Jean Grey gets resurrected by the Phoenix Force again, and everyone dies. Number 2. The X-Apes Marvel Apes, obviously, is a world where everybody is a chimpanzee, including the superheroes. The original miniseries ran after the publisher had already had success with Marvel Zombies and had just given up hope on ever deciding if anything was a good idea before putting it out. Superhero the Gibbon, whose superpower is literally that he's a talking monkey, is informed by a scientist that he may be from an alternate reality and, in searching for it, gets sent back there. To a world where everybody is monkeys. That's the beginning and end of this premise. Everybody is monkeys for f sake! Number 1. Wolverine, Lord of the Vampires. What if Wolverine was Lord of the Vampires is the greatest comic book ever produced, or at least one with the best title. In this alternate reality, Dracula turns Storm into an undead creature of the night, who then sires all of her comrades, putting them under Drax's control. But he didn't count on Wolverine's healing factor, which releases him from the vampire's influence and allows him to chop off his head. Wolvie then proceeds to turn every metahuman in the Marvel Universe into a vampire as well, so they can more easily hunt down all the tasty, tasty normals. At some point the US gets cut off from the rest of the world, Doctor Strange gets killed by the Juggernaut, and his magical mantle gets passed on to the Punisher? With a Yuzi loaded with silver bullets and a holy water pistol, Doctor Punisher takes the fight to Wolverine, and the end result is goddamn glorious. Whoa! Sick son! Oh my. He's my son! That was sick too! You made it through to the end of the video and that was pretty rad! It was amazing. We're so happy. Oh, that's so great! Yeah. You did it! Like, share and subscribe below for more amazing content like this! More videos on our left! And some on our right! And you can see who made this video here!